we have a 48 year old male patient who is undergoing craniotomy in Fowler's position under general anesthesia. During the procedure, the patient suddenly develops hypotension, tachycardia with arrhythmias and hypoxemia. So, what is the cause for this and how do you manage? So, let us see what are the positive findings in this patient. We have a person who is undergoing craniotomy in Fowler's position. What is Fowler's position? Fowler's position as we have learnt it is a sitting position. So, where do you use this Fowler's position? Obviously, we use it for craniotomies for base of the skull surgeries. We also use it for shoulder or clavicle surgeries. The patient is under general anesthetic, so he is not conscious and during the procedure, he suddenly develops hypotension. There is tachycardia with sudden onset arrhythmias and, and hypoxemia. So, there is something that has caused sudden hypotension and tachycardia and hypoxemia. That means, some entity has entered his cardiopulmonary system causing all these events. This is a typical case of venous air embolism. Venous air embolism is embolization of gas into the vasculature. So, any gas can enter the veins. Most commonly, it occurs due to entry of air. You can also have carbon dioxide that can enter the vasculature following laparoscopic surgeries. So, this embolism can be venous if the gas enters the veins, it can be arterial if it enters the arteries and it can be paradoxical. What is paradoxical embolization? Paradoxical embolization is due to presence of patent foramen ovale or any such shunt that can initiate an embolic phenomenon. What are the risk factors? Risk factors for venous air embolism are patient who is a trauma victim with massive maxillofacial trauma, who is in a hypovolemic state and who is expected to receive multiple transfusions and injections. Patient who is undergoing craniotomies in sitting position like posterior fossa surgeries or spine surgeries, patient who is undergoing shoulder surgery or patient who is undergoing laparoscopic surgery is all at a higher risk of developing venous air embolism. During lower segment scissor in section, obstetricians sometimes exteriorize the uterus. This increases the risk of development of venous air embolism. Venous air embolism can also occur during insertion of vascular catheters. Example is central venous line insertion. So, how does the patient present? If you can recollect, our patient in the question had sudden onset tachycardia, hypotension, arrhythmia and hypoxemia. So, the person will have chest pain, palpitation and ischemic ECG changes. There is sudden increase in pulmonary artery pressure and right ventricular outflow tract obstruction. This will all cause acute right heart failure. The person will have increased end tidal carbon dioxide and he will develop hypoxemia and hypercarbia. He will present with acute lung injury and non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. This will present as breathlessness, dry cough and rarely hemoptysis. The CNS features include acute onset confusion, dysarthria, hemiparesis and triggering of seizures. What all you should monitor? In a person who is posted for craniotomies and long procedures like spine surgeries, we will be doing lot of 
invasive monitoring. Transesophageal echo and precordial Doppler USG are most sensitive intraoperatively to diagnose sudden onset venous air embolism. Sudden fall of entitled carbon dioxide can be indicating venous air embolism. On auscultation, you will hear a mill wheel murmur and if there is a pulmonary catheter, you can notice there is sudden elevation in pulmonary artery pressure. So, how do you manage venous air embolism? Management of venous air embolism involves removal of the air that has got entrapped into the vasculature and you have to stop further entrapment of the air. The entrapped air can be removed by aspiration through central venous catheter. You have to stop nitrous and immediately give 100 percent oxygen. Supportive measures like IV fluids and inotropes help maintain the BP. Further entrapment of air should be stopped by informing the surgeon about venous air embolism and by flooding the field with normal saline. So, the source for air is often the field of surgery. So, if you flood the field with saline that can prevent further entrapment of the air. You should apply bone wax to the raw edges of the skull. So, in skull based surgeries the air can seep in through the raw edges of the skull. So, when you apply bone wax that part gets sealed. This will prevent further entrapment of the air through the venous sinuses of the skull. You should pack any open wound that may be causing air entrapment and compressing both the jugulars and lowering the head end helps stop further air entrainment. That is all about venous air embolism. Thank you.